Good morning, good morning, good morning. An unseasonably warm 2nd of February. And I've got to start thinking about cutting some trees down before they start sprouting at this rate. You can cut and log the trees in the winter, but seeing as my help doesn't start until the end of uh, February, the best thing to do is cut them cut them in January or February and then log them later, you know, leave them just lying on the ground for a month or two. So, how are you? Alright, I hope you're doing well. Things are going very well at the angry practice. Staff are very happy. I had two weeks off in December. Two weeks off for Christmas, and then another two weeks off in uh, January. So I haven't really done any work. But um, having said that, I think we got about 5,000 or 10,000 out of the treasury to make sure the bills could be paid in January. And now I'm back, of course, the money's rolling in, so I booked up two weeks ahead. We're getting a lot of patients in who can't get in anywhere else. It's always a bit of a, um, how can I put it, it's a, how can I put it, a concern. It's a concern when people say, like I went to a dentist dinner the other day, lovely dinner, local orthodontist, lovely woman, forks out for a dinner for 25 of her colleagues every year I suppose it was the first time I'd been invited I ended up funnily enough the close up magician a table magician that she'd uh, invited to be the entertainment was um, a guy who I uh, engaged about 20 years ago for a GDPA dinner in London and uh, uh, he walked in and then he sort of you know very very casually just sort of looked around and after a couple of, and I was saying to the woman who's sitting next to me, you know, uh, I know this bloke, you know, I've, I've hired this bloke, he's very good. And after a couple of uh, minutes, he said, to, he said, I know you, don't I? And I said, yeah, yeah. And how how he remembered after 20 years, it was uh, really, uh, you know, I got him. That's the, that was the best trick for me of the night was not the card tricks were, that were themselves really good. There's a guy called Etienne, he's based in Kent. Uh, if you ever want a really, really good uh, table magician for your, you know, for a sort of reasonably large gathering. Anyway, um, so you're sort of talking to these dentists. <laughs> the difference between uh, a meeting of uh, you know of NHS dentists, which you typically get a BDA section meeting or a postgraduate centre meeting, and uh, a meeting of private dentists, which you typically get at a local stately home, is that uh, the NHS dentists will spend all evening whinging about how bad the conditions are and how it's never been so bad and how their surgery is going downhill through no fault of their own and they're working harder blah 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 whereas the private dentists all stand around whinging about um, the fact that they're booked up for six weeks and they haven't got enough time to see everybody and uh, obviously the common thread is whinging they're they're all whinging they'll whinge so we love a whinge, but then I should imagine every profession does. I don't think that's unique to dentists, but if you don't like to hear people whinging, then your best bet is to is to stay away from meetings, to be honest, you know, because that's literally never, for 40 years, it's never changed. It doesn't matter what the system is, what the conditions are, economically, they'll, <coughs> they always whinge. Anyway, um, two things I did find out from that. One is that uh, everyone's really booked up, <clears throat> or three things really. The other one is I arranged a meeting with another dentist locally because um, they're all very much are like, oh yeah, come over, come over to my practice. It'd be lovely to show you around, etc. 
<coughs> excuse me, a lot of dentists have bought surgeries late, tw late 2019, late uh, tw early 2020, and then immediately got hit by COVID. Um, which depends on if you're private, you got hit by it. If you're the NHS, you got paid for doing nothing by it. Uh, and um, so they're all booked up six weeks ahead and whinging. And I got an invitation. And also, I, I uh, told them we, we were charging in advance for all our treatment. And they were like, oh, uh, you mean like taking a deposit? And I'm like, no, we're charging everything, you know. We, we charged the whole lot. So, and and they were gobsmacked, you know, I mean, really seriously, as in, uh, yeah, well, you know, you must be mad. Um, you know, thanks for telling me, but I thought, you know, in the five seconds it's taken to listen to you explain it, I've already decided I'm not going to do it. So, you know, let's not, let's not talk about it a lot. Uh, despite the fact that I told them that it was, no, it was good, very positive for cash flow, uh, but mostly, I mean, most of that positivity from the cash flow not doesn't come because you're um, you're uh, receiving money in advance. It comes because you're you have very very low failure rates. You know, I mean, nobody PFAs, <laughs> nobody. And they all said that PFAs were a problem. Anyway, so <clears throat> we are we are well ahead of the curve on this. You know, I'm thinking that everyone else is within a month or two would have come to the same conclusions as us, but no, uh, nobody has. And they all fear patient backlash. That's what it all boils down to. They're all subservient to their uh, goodwill, you know, and they're worried that, and they, they say things like, oh, well, my, um, my, you know, I bought the practice and I think it's a bit too early to be doing anything like that that might upset the patients. Or don't you upset some patients? And I say, yeah, you do, yeah. But these are patients who pay in advance for airline tickets, ferry tickets, cruise tickets, cinema tickets, you know. Are, are, are you noticing the common thread there? Everybody who books some space on a, a service or for a service in advance, has to pay in advance. Holidays, all paid for. You can't go on holiday and say, I'll pay you when I land. You can't book an airline ticket and say, I'll pay you when I land. Uh, I just don't, the people, they don't accept it. And so, but the profession anyway is having, having a lot of trouble getting their heads around that we're in the same group of services as these sort of uh, utilities. Yes, anyway, so um, back to my original point, which is that, don't know, you know, do you think people get um, upset when, well, do, should you as a dentist get upset when people say to things to you on the phone like, oh, I've been ringing around everywhere, I can't get an appointment anywhere, you know, and uh, you're the only dentist who's got, who could see me today, you know. And it's always, um, it's always thank you so much. Uh, but there's always an element of why are you, why is your surgery empty, you know? Why have you got no patients? Everybody else seems to have a much great waiting list, except you, you seem to have no patience. Now, <clears throat> there's two answers. One is that we set an hour aside every day for emergencies. We set aside uh, 10 to 10.30 and uh, 4.30 to 5. And 10 to 10.30, if nobody comes in, then we have a tea break. And uh, 4.30 to 5 if nobody comes in, obviously, that's, that's much less utilised, the afternoon one, because usually we will have seen the emergencies by then. But supposing a child rings at 3 o'clock after school or something, then again, we can get them in. Um, but um, usually they use that time just for cleaning up, you know, and uh, scrubbing down and stuff like that. So that's why we can see emergencies quickly. It doesn't mean that we have got, um, you know, there's any less demand. Ooh, let me just get back in front of this large lorry, which is being followed by an extremely large train of traffic. There we are, we've done it. It's, 
it just means that we have a we have one hour every day that we can allocate and it, it's not really allocated until it can't be booked <coughs> it can only be booked on the day although if you want to muck about with the appointment book you can book it in advance if you need to but you know if, it's just, if you can justify that but like for example so if you're coming back off suppose you've been on holiday for two weeks and someone rings you the day before and says I need to come in tomorrow as an emergency and you agree then you can book them in a day in advance just by reallocating that time from emergency to straight for clinical time so immediately frees up some time in your but the other reason why we are um, our waiting list is under control is that we are um, I would say far more efficient in terms of how we deal with treatments where we are uh, we are very efficient we will always try and do uh, you know if we're doing one side of the mouth we'll always try and do all the fillings on that side of the mouth or if we uh, doing a root treatment then we'll always try and do the entire root treatment on the first visit if we can and that's because we've got time to do it you know it's not like we've got we we'll give ourselves 45 minutes to do a root filling we give ourselves an hour and a half and after an hour and a half the patient's um, fed up and so are we <laughs> yeah so it's quite funny I had a patient in with Ehlers Danlos syndrome yesterday who dislocated her jaw deliberately she knew she knew she knows it happens so uh, we were doing a uh, root filling on her tooth and we did the root filling and then she she relocated her jaw herself which was good i didn't even realize she dislocated it but she just did it because she knew it was uh, easy you know that's what it make it easier for me <laughs> So anyway, so that was that was jolly useful. We, um, where else is going on? I've had a patient in who needs a full full, and uh, uh, I, I've gone back over the last couple of years. I've gone back to the techniques I was taught in UCH in the late seventies, and that means that for full full, we're doing um, impressions in uh, composite compo whatever it's called and then we do a wash with a light bodied elastomer and then um, once we poured up and trimmed up the uh, impressions we uh, then put some uh, shellac base plates down so we're using shellac ha <laughs> ha so that's good fun I'm waiting for those we had to order them from Metrodent but I don't think they keep them in stock so uh I've had to order them in. Uh, so that would be good fun. So the, my technician who sort of comes in and watches me and keeps an eye on what I'm doing myself said, you know, do you want me to do those? <coughs> he said, uh, you've got some compo, base, uh, compo impressions there. Do you want me to pour them up? And I said, no. Well, I said, I'm going to box them in and pour them up. I said, unless you want to go to all the palaver of boxing them in, I said, you, you won't want to do it. And, and then uh, then he came in, he saw that I'd got them all boxed in and poured up, and he says, uh, do you want me to do the uh, bites? And I said, well, I'm going to do them on a shellac base plate. He said, yeah, yeah. He says, do you want me to do that? And I said, no, I said, that's half the fun. This is for doing the mucking about with the shellac. I said, no. He's, uh, and he was like... He looked at me as if a bit as if to say, "Oh, that's a shame." I'd quite like I'd have liked to have mucked about with shellac, you know. So anyway, we'll see how it goes. I'm pleased to say quality's going up and up and up, you know. Once you get, we've got a OVD uh, gauge and a Willis gauge and a uh, Alma gauge. So we're having good fun making dentures at the moment. We like the full falls. We've got the uh, post dams like properly back, and uh, we 
I've got the uh, the peripheral uh, seal because we're keeping the thickness of the of the plate as well as the extension. Because the you find the labs always uh, thin these thin these things down, and so you don't get any seal on them. What else? Communication, just a little word about communication, I think. <clears throat> communication is key uh, in a surgery and it plays a big part of how we stay efficient and also how we provide a service which is like head and shoulders above any other dentist. And that is that um, someone can ring me, say, uh, six o'clock, seven o'clock or something of an evening and I will take a call um, because I know they're not going to be abusive calls. You know, you're not going to you're not going to get some drunk pub bloke coming out of the pub ringing and saying he's got a toothache. Uh, Eleven o'clock, twelve o'clock. Which used to get on the NHS when when my made my phone number available, and that's why so many surgeries on the NHS you just get an answer phone because people have abused the system of being able to talk to a dentist and so. The, that, that privilege has been withdrawn but in our surgery it hasn't if anybody rings um, our phone number for a start what happens is we've got a voice over internet we use Vonage which um, gives you a phone number and a you know and a, and a box which you plug into the internet and then you plug your phone into the box and every time someone rings the number they give you then your phone rings now um, that's also that's an advantage because where we live is in a uh, innovation centre, and they are allocated a block of numbers. So they've got zero one eight four three two six five x x x, right? Let's just let this guy out. So we can't, um, we can't um, take that with us. I said, you know, like in the normal way with a business, if you've got a phone number, you can, it's portable, it's supposed to be portable. Um, but basically they've said, no, this block of numbers, it doesn't belong to you, it belongs to us. Uh, and therefore we won't we won't let you port here so <clears throat> what I did was and it was a difficult decision at the time because it meant changing our phone number for the practice it had been been one number for you know for five or ten years or something and and so we had to do a complete change but I figured it was easier to do a complete change while we were staying in the same premises than do a complete change in the middle of moving to other premise premises so what we did was we changed our phone number. We literally, I got my own VOIP Vonage number, um, which has nothing to do with the center's number, and now all my phone calls come over the internet. Now, um, that means obviously that we can take it with us whenever we move. So although we might now move physical premises, we can also move the number will stay the same because we'll just plug the internet box in the new internet and, and the phone numbers will start coming through the new place. The other thing that it does mean is that we get all the facilities of a VOIP provider and one of those is a, what they call simul ring, which means that when the uh, surgery's phone rings, my phone rings, my mobile. And so um, if my, my phone rings out of hours and I don't recognize the number, then it's almost certainly gonna be a patient. And, and also what I do is in my phone, when a number rings, I put in the name of the patient, who it was, and in brackets P, just to remind myself it's a patient. So, <clears throat> so there I am sitting at home, six o'clock at night, blah, blah, blah. And uh, the phone rings. Oh, so-and-so, uh, you know, I'm, I need to come in tomorrow, I've got two things. Okay, give us a ring. 
8.45 tomorrow. They're there from 8.30, but I say 8.45, which is technically when the phone's open. Um, no problem. And um, then what I'll do is on WhatsApp, we have like a staff WhatsApp, and I'll put on the WhatsApp, Mr. So-and-so will be ringing 8.45 tomorrow morning, he's got two phones. And that's it, that's it dealt with from my point of view. Now, that goes out to all the staff, receptionists and nurses and everything, so everybody's in the loop in terms of the fact that that patient's gonna be an extra for the next day. Uh, and the same goes with emails. Uh, if, uh, if I get an email of an evening saying, uh, you know, toothache, same again, I, I'll, I'll just uh, put it on the WhatsApp Mr. So and so is going to be ringing tomorrow, or uh, they might uh, say, you know, your first patient's not in till nine or whatever. And so, so communication is very good. Once I put it on the WhatsApp, I can forget it because I know that they'll pick it up. They'll know they they have a list, and if one of them forgets, then the other ones had it anyway. So um, you know, it's very unlikely that they'll get overlooked. And it's much better than the alternative, which is. Um, uh, just forward in the email because the, you know some of the inquiries come in by phone some come in by email so and the whatsapp is the communication channel for the whole lot so we've got two emergencies coming in as it happens today um, I mean it's somewhat as a result of the fact that I've been off for two weeks and so all the antibiotics I prescribed three weeks ago are all wearing off but um, we can we can certainly uh, de-innovate or clean out um, uh, a root treatment in the 15 or 30 minutes that we've got. And as I say, we've got an hour today for emergencies, so we're okay. So I don't worry too much when dentists say that uh, I'm booked up six weeks ahead. In fact, I tend to regard that as a sign of inefficiency. I really don't think that it's a good idea for patients to have to wait six weeks for a point. You know, I mean, if you went to an exhaust centre because your exhaust had fallen off your car and they told you the earliest appointment they've got to even look at it is six weeks away, uh, you'd be pretty pretty uh, upset, wouldn't you? You'd be pretty pissed off. Uh, and I think the patients are the same, you know, they just, they will put up with it because, um, you know, they think you're a tolerable dentist and they don't know, and they've heard that there are a lot of intolerable dentists around and they don't want to end up with one of those, so... So it's done under sufferance. Anyway, that's about it. So three subjects to cover three subjects today. Ho, 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 ho. Now, if I was booked up six weeks ahead, I'd need to, you'd have to either raise your prices or uh, get, a, get an associate. And of the two, I'd rather raise my prices, to be honest. She'd give me the eye, didn't she? I don't know what I'd done for driving on a bit of land that she was about to walk on. All right, okay, I'll see you soon, bye.